Today we shall be going over bar chords, but we're also going to be looking at the grid using the grid. The grid, the grid giveth so much. If this is your first time watching any of my videos and you're on the replay, let me just tell you my long sessions like this are not wham bam, thank you, ma'am. If you want the pure. Um, golden tips and nuggets watch the shorter videos this is a live stream this is about an hour long maybe more I'll talk to people if you don't like to join in and put things you know then this might not be the video for you if they just leave this for the guys on the replay yeah um, so if you want those nuggets and things like that we'll get to them we'll circle back around and we'll cut them out and we'll upload them as little short videos little short videos guys if however this isn't your first time you know that this is lessons from the book we are doing lessons from the book and earlier on today in my facebook community if you're not part of that community then you need it in your life if you do facebook that is i will say that if that's the case then there's my facebook group can i pin that Oh, I can. I can do that. Oh, look, I can even add it to the broadcast. Look at that. Boom. There you go. So there's the Facebook group. Yeah, that's the URL for that. Oh, and then what I do is I just go over there and then hover. Gone. OK, so that link is in there, guys. Um, and also I'll put this link here. This is where you get the book. If you don't have it, we're going to be really digging into the book today. There's a lot that we need to get into with the book. So if you much rather use a scanner QR code, there's the QR code for the book if you haven't got it. Because like I say, look, you might want to screenshot that. That's all that I've got in my head today that I was thinking. Because somebody in the Facebook group said, man, I'm struggling with with bar chords. And that's what today's lesson is all about. First page you want is this one. Yeah, the first page you want is this one here. And I'm gonna explain the rationale behind this. So look, this is, let it focus, lesson 14, page 19. And the thing is, you see, what can happen with bar chords is you can see them um, in in isolation and you miss out how they are connected yeah so uh, I've got some videos coming up soon actually I've got a video coming up soon that talks about uh, uh, these chords um, these ten chords uh, that I think that are important ones that you need to learn but really it's about two keys so let's just Let's get some stuff, let's put con bar chords in context and how, how important they really are, yeah? So if I play the two keys that most songs uh, basically are written in, yeah? So most songs, because, because of the white keys on the piano, that's C major, yeah? C major, no sharps, no flats. Nice and easy for piano, they don't have to use any of the black keys there, they just use the white keys. Yeah, and, and then you can make songs. G major, add the F sharp, swap it out for the for the F. Don't play the F, play an F sharp instead. You've got the key of G major. And those are the two most important keys. And I call those, like I said, said last week, I explained them as the capo keys. Do you remember that, guys? Do you remember? <laughs> hey, true armor's here, true S armor's here. Do you remember that, guys, last week when I was talking about the capo and how the capo works? Yeah, you've got the C position chords and the G position chords. For those that, that weren't here in class last week, what we've got is if we play the chords from the key of C, we've got C. That sounds a bit woolly. It's mellow. We'll go with it. Yeah, so we've got the key of C. We've got the key of D minor key of D minor. We've got the chord C, we've got the chord D minor, chord 2, chord 3 is E minor. Then what happens is we get the F chord. Yeah? 
this is where a bar chord has to happen. There's no keys without bar chords. Yeah, every key has a bar chord. It's just how many can you handle, right? How many bar chords can you handle? Okay, so we've got an F there. We've got a G, we've got an A minor, and we've got a B. We've got this funky B diminished. We can play it like that, or we can play it like the proper moody way, like that from the harmonic minor. Um, we can play those there, but we can't escape playing that bar chord there, that F. Right, so this is a great opportunity for me to explain the shapes. And this ties in with caged. It ties in with the cage system because the two bar chord shapes we use more than any other shapes, generally, as a rule, because they're the first ones everybody learns. So because of the first ones everybody learns, they're the f most used ones when people write songs. It's, it goes to say that it's a, a logical kind of uh, thing that happens. So this F chord here, what we have to do is we have to disassemble it a bit to be able to see what's going on there. So if I take the bar off, slide it back here, you can see that this is an E shape from the cage. So remember we've got C, A, G, E, D, yeah? Those are the five shapes. Those are the only five shapes we have, guys. C, A, G, E, D. C, A, G, E, D. Okay? Right? Chords and guitar every day. Yes! That's the message we're trying to spread here. Yes. <laughs> Sorry for your lateness, Chris. Definitely. Next time, you will have to stand in the corner. Yeah? All right? Okay? Right. Now, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're gonna take that E shape now, and we're just gonna show you how this works. We can take this E shape and we can transpose it, because essentially the index finger is acting like the head nut. This is the start of the neck of the guitar, isn't it? And it's also acting like a, a movable capo made of flesh and bone. Yeah, so we've got this one here, we've got the E shape, and if I put that on there, then I can move this here. My root note exists on the E string. So I need to look on the E string for my root note for an E shaped bar chord. Now, that's an F, that's an F sharp, that's a G, that's an F, a flat or a G sharp, it can be either or other. That's an A, it's an A sharp or a B flat. B, C, C sharp or D flat, D, D sharp or E flat, and then we're back to E again. So we've got all 12 of our notes in there, including the enharmonic equivalent. So let's go like this, we go, we've got that F, F sharp, look at the shape, look at the shape, it's still the same shape, it's still an E shape, and it's got the five R three thing going on, yeah? Okay, so look at this. Moving it up, can you see? It's just the same thing, moving up. And I'm just basically chasing my root note on the E string there, look. So there's a B, right? Now, the first question's come in and it's from Maria and she says, is it better to find the shape first then bar after? This is the crux of the problem. The way that it's taught mostly is the bar goes on first, then people put the shape on. But there's a problem with that, and it's physiological. If we look at how, excuse me, I'm not swearing at you. You know, this is French, uh, this is English to the French at Agincourt. Yes. Um, what we have is we have ligaments that work alongside each other here. Yeah, they form like an A shape. There's a strap one that goes across here. And when you pull your first finger in, actually, just hold your hand up sideways like that. All right, and just lower your first finger. See how it wants to pull on that middle finger? Yeah, we've got to work with the machine. Yeah? You've got to work with the machine that you've got. Yeah, and your hand is the machine. So you need to understand the mechanics of your hand. So if we pull down like that, you can feel the tension in there. Now, if you're new to bar chords, what will happen is, is you will question that because your body will say, uh -uh, don't like that, don't do it, stop it, feels awful, feels bad. Don't do it. And that will send you that message that you struggle with it and you'll doubt yourself, your ability. So there is an easier way around it. And the way I see it is, is we've got five fingers and I developed this thing and it's part of this thing that I call clockwork chords. 
is clock cut work card system, which I've been working on today, guys. Um, and what we have is we have scout fingers. So this one, this middle finger here, this is the one that I use as a scout finger. Yeah, and this is in one of the lessons in the book here. This is, um, ooh, someone will know already. Let's have a look. Uh, I'll tell you which one it is. The video on my channel is bar chords are easy. Yeah, because the thing is, when you start with the bar, the hard. When you start with a the scout, they're easier. Let's have a look. It's somewhere around here. I've lost it. I've lost the page. Um, somebody knows where this is, and if they can see where that is. Oh, hang on. Uh, where are we? We're getting there. We're in the chord section. Um, right. Let's get there. Take me time. Take me on, sweet time. Um, this is lesson 37, page 43. Yeah. And you can see. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Focus. Not you guys out there. The 43, lesson 37. So what I do is in this one, I talk about how to make your bar chords. Um, and essentially... When we try by putting the bar on first and then putting the chords on, it's harder. This is the bully finger. This is, and it's obvious that it would be because it's logical because this is the one we do typing with, you know? But it, who, is anybody a two finger typer like that? Yeah, maybe adding a thumb. But the thing is, this is a dominant finger. So this is the one that feels natural that you should be doing that, but it's counterintuitive. Because what we need to do is we need to Scout first. This is my opinion. You know, there might be people out there, they're going to poo-poo it, but they're going to poo-poo it. I don't care. As long as people learn how to play guitar, I do not care. Yeah, it's all about that. So watch this. You put the scout on. This is uh, the general gist of it. We put the scout on. We put the shape on. We put the bar on last because this finger is the most stretchable one. This is the one. It's a probing finger. It can reach out further. Now, if you put this on here, these fingers feel more, far more restricted. And then what you've got to do is you've got to think about holding the, putting the cord on. And that's like kind of holding up a shelf and trying to screw something in at the same time. So what we do is we take it bit by bit. Look, we put the scout, put the shape on. You can see it's that E shape that I said before. And then we put the bar on last. Yeah, what we want to do is we want to make sure as well that we get a good angle on our fingers. Let's have a look. I wonder if I can just switch uh, cameras if this is um, if this is on. Can I get this here? Nope, that's the wrong way. Right, can I switch that? Can you see how my first finger there is? It's not on the flat. It's not on the flat. It's on the curve of the finger there. So I've got scout, shape then bar. Let me put that on there. Let me just see if I can raise this up a little bit more. Excuse my dodgy cameraman tactics here. So we go scout, shape, bar. And I'm on the side of the finger, on the curved part here. Just here. Yeah, not on the flat part here. Because if you're on the flat part, what will happen is the strings will disappear in these grooves here. I've got that, that, that. Okay. And you can see that my fingers... They're all arched. I'm going to have to come from this side. Can you see there how my fingers are all arched? They're not flat. Yeah. So we've got that going on there. Also, we need to take into account that when we put on a bar chord, we have opposing force that we need to put in there as well. So as well as that uh, first finger pushing against there, we've got to account for the thumb. So my thumb... I tend to put it in the middle there, like that. If you have your thumb too high, you'll struggle because that will scrunch your fingers up, yeah? So let the thumb go in the middle and let's see if that can go on this camera here. Let me show you. Can you see there? Thumb in the middle, yeah? You could put it as far down as the middle there as you need it to be. So we could put it like that. That's it. Now, another thing, if you struggle with it, what you can do, yeah, what you can do is, look at this. If I put it on, scout, shape, bar, 
yeah and just as i'm about to strum what i can do is i can lean on this part of the guitar here and push it in slightly this way with my forearm you can see when i do that watch push in that way right not too far not too hard because you'll snap the neck off your guitar you don't want to do that so look at this shape pull it in right and what that does is it forces the neck out and it puts pressure on the bar itself without you having to put too much effort in on the thumb yeah so we've got that going on here okay yeah you use it now gary just said something there which is interesting yeah because the, for me there's two parts to this there's the visualization and i used to, i've got a handout somewhere that, that that actually says this the visualization and the actualization the visualization is a super quick movie that you play in your head when you think to yourself okay i'm going to play an a major bar chord what happens and this is the same for me because i still see it because i still need to find the root note this is why you need to learn the names of the notes on your fretboard i go right okay so what i do is i visualize the root note i imagine where the bar has to go and then i imagine the shape but the realization the, sorry the actualization is once you've got that movie in your head you know what it looks like what you should do then is go scout shape bar you'll find it easier as well excuse me as you go further up the neck the thing is that people go f chord right and they get stuck and it's very frustrating and it's very frustrating and they can stay there for years what you can do is you can work backwards with this guys you can work backwards just get this finger here and i want you to just press down on your e string just there i just feel the tension pressing down on that string at the first fret okay all right okay all right now do it at the ninth fret see how much easier it is to press down there at the ninth fret so don't start this down here it's like going to the gym right? getting all the weights and saying right i'm going to pick up the heaviest thing i can find in here you wouldn't do it you'd injure yourself you'd be frustrated we don't want that yeah start with light weights so here's what we do we go to this this seventh fret on the ninth fret or somewhere around there where the ten string tension is less and we go right we're going to go for this b i'm going to go for this b here so i'll do the visualization then the actualization the visualization goes the root notes there the bar goes there the shape goes there but the realization is scout shape bar that's much easier so then you squeeze you pull that chord there you go you've got it you practice it don't over squeeze it you can over squeeze it some people do and then they feel that fatigue and pain that means you are overdoing it here's how to solve that what we do is we gently release the fingers until the chord fails then you can feel exactly how much more pressure you need to put on for it to work and you'll find it's a lot less than you think to hold the bar chord and if you're using this kind of um, this uh, um, uh, pivot i forgot fulcrum yeah this fulcrum idea because your body is acting as a fulcrum you're pushing down here it's almost like a seesaw so you're pushing forward there and you do a bit of that as well you don't need much and it's there and it now what you do is you start in this position here and you get that good and then you move it down a fret and then you move it down another fret then you move it down another fret don't over squeeze it no down another fret down another fret until you get to the dreaded f chord this can work for you guys you know um this is one of the simplest ways around seeing it but this is only one of the shapes remember yeah so what we've got is we've got this chord here this f chord yeah and i told you that the root note for that chord is up the e string here all these notes here 
Now, we know that this shape here is an E shape. We take it back. Yeah, we can see it's that E shape. Now, what we do is 5R3. If we flatten that third, yeah, we end up with this open string, and that gives us an E minor chord. And Colin said, actually, there, you know, bar chords on electric are easy compared to uh, a, a steel strung acoustic. And Colin's, I don't know if that's making life hard for yourself with 13s on that there, Col. Uh, you know, um, acoustic guitar is a lot harder to get bar chords on. Yeah. And people always think, oh, I'm starting to learn guitar. Should I get myself an acoustic or an electric? Electric's easier. Why struggle and battle? Just get an electric. Start on an electric. I know there's more amps and things to buy, but you don't necessarily need an amp to, to get started. Yes, it's nice. The acoustic has everything there, but it's going to be harder. And I will say, one of the things that affects a guitar massively is the action. The action of the um, the strings. And what do I mean by that? The action of the strings. So, well, let me show you. The action is the distance of the string from the fret wire. So you can see that there is a gap between the string and the fret wire there. Now, the thing is, I've got a lovely Martin guitar over there. But when I got it, it was awful. It was absolutely awful. The action was like really high and it was really hard to press chords down, you know? Uh, and what you've got to do is you've got to make life easier for yourself. If you imagine that you were driving your car and your pedals were like three foot and you had to put your knees up and stamp on them to, to use the pedals in your car, it would be really hard to drive. You need to do the same thing. Make it easy for yourself. Get a setup. Go to a local guitar store or to some local luthier, get a setup. You will notice how much easier it is to learn to play it. But here's the payoff with getting a setup. If the guitar is easier to play, you'll learn quicker. You'll get to your goal quicker. You won't also associate the pain of learning how to play because it's easier. You'll want to practice more. It creates this virtuous uh, circle, yes? So this is one of the things that you need to really get to grips with. So bar chords mm -hmm. on an awful guitar are gonna be awful. There's no two ways around it, yeah? Um, uh, a relaxing meditation says, I call bar chords root six, root five, root four. Yeah, well, you can look at those as being the shapes, really. You know, because the thing is, root six could be E and G shapes. Root five could be C and A shapes. And root four could be D shapes. And that covers the whole idea of cage. But what we do is we look, we look at the shapes. We, we see the shapes first, I think. But yeah, six, it can be. If For those people who don't know this, that sometimes you can refer to strings by a number. So this would be six. Five, four, three, two, one. Instead of the uh, alphabet letter names, that works as well. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Um, so, yes, nice low action. That makes life a lot easier. So you can do that. But what we're doing is we're just focusing on the E string and the A string, which is why I say learn your E string and learn your A strings first. Because then you can see what's going on there. Yes. Okay. Right. So. Um. Right. So what we've got is we've got this one here. Right. I got to the minor chord. Okay. So we have this E shape here. I moved it down. I took the finger off, and you can see that we've got five R three, and that's a flat third. So essentially, what I can do is I can do the same thing that I did with the E shape. Let me take this up here, and I'll show you how I do this. I scout with these two fingers. Now, this might seem counterintuitive as well. This is part of this whole clockwork chords idea. Yeah, we've got scout fingers. But what we also have is we have two finger groups. Now, the way that these tendons all work, yeah, if you understand how the machine works, you understand how to operate it in a more efficient manner. 
So look at this. These two fingers work together. These two fingers want to work together and these two fingers want to work together. And this is what I call a two finger group. And that is where two fingers act as one finger. Yeah. And that what that does is it, it takes down the process of putting your cords on. If you think about it as when you put a cord on, there are steps to the process. Look, if I put the if I put the um, F chord on, I've got one, two, three three steps to the process. And what we want to actually get to is something that I call blended movement, where it all goes on in one movement, one simple movement, like swinging a golf club. Yeah? Okay, so this is the way we want to do it. So we want it to go on there like that. But how do we do it with this? Well, what we do is we use this two finger group as a scout. Does this make sense, guys? A two finger group as a scout. Dem Ravens, you're at it again, aren't you? You always come in here and doing this. <laughs> right, I'm going to take a, a sip of here. Me cup of tea there. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> so, right. Uh, so, really low action. Uh, e string is learning to two at the s low. Colin, you're absolutely right. When you learn your top thicky, you're learning your thinny at the same time because this is uh, mirrored. It's just basically a mirrored string. And if you've seen that video where I talk about the guitar just being a five string thing, then that might make sense as well. But for now, what we do is we're going to scout with this. And it's the same thing. We What we do is we visualize, then we actualize. So when I'm thinking of this, I think, well, right, I want an F minor bar chord. There's my F. There's the bar and there's the E minor shape, okay? But the actualization is we scout shape bar. Well, the scout is the shape for this E minor. So I put both of those fingers on at the same time because these two fingers want to work together at the same time. Okay, look, so two fingers and then I put my bar on. So it becomes this two step process, shape, scout, bar, yeah? And then that means I can just transfer that whole idea up the neck. And like I say, what we could do is we could focus on scouting with those two fingers first, put the bar on last. Now what you'll notice is, say for instance, I was playing in the key of G here. And we're on the grid here, guys, yeah? We're on the L7 grid, so look, these are your major chords. That's chord one, chord four, chord five, chord six is here. Chord three is here and it's a minor chord. Chord two is here and that's a minor chord. If we take chord three, yeah, which is this B minor chord here. And then what we want to do is we want to move to an A minor. Then all we need to do is release the bar slightly. I'm taking it off just to show you what I'm actually doing. But I release it ever so slightly. Keep these fingers on the strings, release the grip. Now what we're going to do is we use the the grooves of the fingers. You've already got grooves in those fingers. We're going to use them like train tracks. We're going to use the strings like train tracks and the fingers are like the wheels of the train. We're just going to trail them down to where they need to be and then apply the bar. Now when I do it like this, you can't really see that happening. But let me just see how this goes. Look, watch. So there, right there. at the bar and then I'm trailing with the shape so yeah so we've got that going on there okay so that kind of covers the E shape we've got this look at this even when I go down to this G chord here from the three B minor, A minor, as I'm coming down here, I get my shape on, then I put my bar on last. Yeah, that's really uh, gonna help you to get the E shapes. Now that's one part of the puzzle, yeah? We've got the E shapes there. The next thing we need to do is we need to pop over onto the A strings, the A strings, the A string, <laughs> and play the shapes there. Now what this does is this ties into 
that whole thing about the key of G. And this is what we need to look at with the key of G. Remember, I started with the um, C position chords and explained where the, the F is. We've got one bar chord in the key of C. Well, we've got one bar chord in the key of G, and that is the B minor chord. But let me show you how we go through this. We've got G, cowboy chord, A minor, cowboy chord. Now, here we go. We're going to have <laughs> the B minor chord. Now, the thing is, you see this A minor shape here, yeah? Can you see it looks like the same grip as the E? So the same thing is going to apply here. Look, we're going to have a lot of the same feeling, a lot of the kinesthetic stuff happening here, guys. So look, look at that there. We take that A minor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my fingers around because you can see I need to get this first finger free for my bar. So there's the A minor. I'll just start. I'll scout with my middle finger there. I put fingers three and four on, get the shape. Now what I can do is I can transpose this up. This is A minor. If I move it up two frets, it becomes B minor. I'm missing my bar. I'm going to put it all the way across that second fret there. I'm not playing the E string. The E string is not part of the equation, guys. That is extra note. We don't want that there. So what we do then is we do exactly the same thing. If we want to come from a standing start with that, we would go finger two, finger three and four, then we would go bar. So it's scout, shape. I'm doing that in C. Yeah, there, B minor, there we go. So look, scout, shape, bar, okay? Now, we've got the pesky one coming up here. Um, so we've got the G, A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor, We've got F sharp diminished, back to G. The B minor, we've got to learn to play that. So the two bar chords that you need to learn first are the F and the B minor. We can cheat with those. I do like to show the cheat as well. Yeah. So this is where the purists start stamping the feet. Um, and I don't care as long as you serve the song. As long as it serves the song. Look at this. Now, if I play it like this, nobody's going to be able to see that from, you know, with binoculars from a, a distant cliff <laughs> when they're out bird watching. Yeah, it's like, it's not going to happen. So there is a way of playing that. I, I'm barring here partially. And this could be a good way to start learning how to bar. Just hold a, a, a couple of strings down, not all of them. Like this and this will operate in the same way look if I want to turn that into a minor I have to bar over three strings it's a little bit trickier but it's the same process put the shape on put that bar on there there we go okay so we've got that there um, Gary also mentioned something about Hendrix now if you have super long slender spider fingers yeah and you'll find that most of the great guitarists have got long spindly fingers uh, then this is going to be easier for you. This is something, personally, that I struggle with. I can just about do that there. But don't ask me to bar that at the same time because my stumpy sausages, they don't do it. They're not going to do it. They're just not going to do it. And I don't know how many people uh, um, actually you know, are able to do that sort of thing. The reason it's cool, the reason it's cool is because if you can do that, you've got this pinky free. Yeah? You can do that there. Um, Gary also just said, yeah, okay, you can do this. You can do the first four strings. This is what I call, <laughs> this is what I call the semi-skim deaf. Yes, this is semi-skimmed, yeah, this is, uh, this is full fat, I just kind of likened it to cream, I can't remember the exact analogy I said, full fat, semi-skimmed, yes, so we can go for a light version, this is Bud Light, the Bud Light version of the F, this is Jack Daniels, right, okay, we'll go that way, don't want any jokes about Bud Light in there, guys, right? 
Okay, so long fingers mean long gloves. It definitely nothing to do with feet. Um, uh, so uh, let's just have a little a look here. The ear shape or uh, the A and E shape is movable. C shape is the hardest. Uh, yeah, the the C, movable C shape is the hardest, but we're not going to tackle those. We're not going to tackle those. We're just we're just going to use these on the grid because I just want to show you the usefulness of this. Um, um, well, he might have had thinner hands, transparent prints. He might have had that. But the thing is, it's all about the thickness of the neck as well. I'm actually on the hunt for a neck with a thinner nut. So choice of guitar um, can be really useful as well. This is a 42. Um, this is 0.42 uh, mil. Of, I think it's 4.2. 4, 4, 4 centimeters i don't know what that i don't know if it is but 42 mil maybe it can't be 42 that there it's 42 but i've been looking at 40 mil necks it is 40 mil um and they seem to have this th thinness to them that make it easy to move up and down the neck just make everything easier and i'm wondering if i tried one of those um and i have tried an, an, a 1960s sg and it was easy for me to put the thumb over it, it, it worked because the the neck was thinner as well so you've got to watch out for this you know for especially if it's vintage guitars yeah colin says 42 yeah i was trying to f figure out if it was 0 0.42 or something yeah so it's, look we've got three ways we can play the f there yeah we can play it like this or we can play it like this or we can hendrix it if we can if you can get your hands there i can't get them yeah, so, but that'll do the job. That'll do the job. And the reason, the reason that this one's good is because I like to be able to play this sus too. If you've got the bar on and you take that middle finger off. Oh, can you hear? We get a completely different effect. Yeah, we get that minor chord coming in there. So... That is kind of the way I'm thinking about it with that. Now, with going back again to the B minor. Shape, bar. There is a cheat for this. Yes. What we could do is put this first finger on. On that second fret there. And that could be a good cheat if you struggle with it. There's no barring going on in that, but but if you're gonna play it as a bar, then this is how you do it. Scout shape bar. Yeah. Now, this is from an A shape. Yeah, there's the A shape that it comes from. Put that there. Really, this is the shape that it's coming from. 5R3. Bless them all. Bless them all. Yeah, so right, so we've got that going on there, five R three, and then by flattening that, that's where we get that minor from. Look, here's the major, here's the minor. So we end up with the same thing going on like we had with the E shape. Look, here's E major, here's E minor. Okay, but now what we're going to do is we're going to use that information on the um, on the A string as well here so look we've got the same thing going on like we had with the e, the e string there we've got a a sharp or b flat b c d uh, c sharp d flat d d sharp e flat um oh ricky what are you going that was right e f f sharp g flat g uh, um g sharp or a flat and then back to a again so look all those notes same notes as this just in a different order same notes as the E string. So now what we could do is if we think about it, we've got this B minor chord on there. What we could do is we can take that. Horror movie stuff. Yeah. Right, so we've got that same shape and we're just moving it up using the same process with that first finger. So we take the shape, and then what we do is we release at the bar, 
and then we move and then we put the bar back on again. Yeah, so it doesn't matter where you do it, this is what, what's going to happen. But we have to find a way to play the A chord. Now, um, I felt kind of like I was, I had a sigh of relief when I was watching Brian May. Yeah, and I, and, and I noticed that Brian May plays his A shape with his pinky. Now, it depends on how flexible your pinky is. Now, mine, I don't think it's that... As I get older, I think I seem to become more inflexible. I'm a bit more, I'm a bit like a, me, a Lego man. <laughs> I, just, I have a limited range of movement the older I get. So the thing is, yeah, that's about the, the, the scope of the flexibility there, right? Some people have hypermobility and then they do that and then, you know, they're folding it back on themselves and it, they look like they're contortionists, yes? Right, so... The thing is, it's all about the flexibility. Now, this part of the finger, you notice, look at your finger, guys. It breaks up into three bits. It's got one, two, three segments to it. This is called the distal phalange or phalanx. Uh, yeah, so what we can do is we can actually get the A shape just with that part of the finger. Now, some people like to use the distal phalange of the ring finger here, okay, just using that end portion that the nail is on, the nail of your finger is on. Not this bit, not using this bit. You've got to watch out for this because the strings can disappear into the cracks where you f those uh, uh, <laughs> go together. Hands like bricks. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> they, are, they do sometimes feel like that, you know. Um, so here, look, that's how I play the, the B chord. And I can get enough of a curve on that to let that E string ring open there. Yeah? And when I mute, do I mute the E string? Yes, I do. You'll see this. Let me hold the, the guitar up to the camera. Let's have a look. Can you see the tip of my finger is just muting the E string out? Can you see? It's just touching it. It's just enough to deaden it. That's all it is. Not on it. And some people, do you know if, you, if, you've, if you've got accuracy with your pick, then you don't need to worry about that. I've I've seen guys with big hands, and the only way that they can cope with this, with getting the bar on, they use the third finger, and the, the first finger goes all the way across that, but they just don't hit the E string, yeah? Now that works as well, yeah? So you can put the third finger on, then put the bar on. And that's the process, the visualization versus the actualization. Now, I think, I think that um, I think that putting the full shape on like this and then barring like that, it's going to take a little bit more time. It's going to take a little bit more time. That there is a little bit easier and that is a little bit easier because what you're doing is you've got a two-step process. You could even play it like the way that I showed you the A. You know, I play the A a little bit differently. I didn't show you the A. I was recording a video about this earlier on. So look, we put the scalp and then we put these two fingers on and then we put the bar on there. That works for some people as well. Yeah, that's good. If you want to change to a major seven, to a seven chord, which is pretty. Okay. Right, so what we've got is we've got that A shape. I play it like that. There's no correct way to play this. There is no absolute cookie cutter way. It's about your hands. It's about your hands, not my hands. Yeah, so there is no absolute method. Yeah, you've got to find your own way with this. But if I present these ways to you, then you can see uh, how this uh, is going to uh, going to happen for you, hopefully. Now, <clears throat> let's put this in context uh, Raja says if you don't use bar chords you should be bar barred barred from uh, that's a pun isn't it Rajesh that's that's a pun mate I saw what you did there we'll go with it we'll roll with it right so what we need to do now though is put these chords into uh, these chord shapes these bar chords into context and this is where lesson 37, no, not 37. The lesson, which was the first one? Lesson 14, page 19, what was on about? By using the grid, right? Here's where it gets interesting. 
We're going to use the dots because they're easy there to help us. They're there to help us see where we are. A pun definitely intended. Wonderful. Thank you very much for that. Yes, so look, we've got this is our tonic. The tonic is also the root of chord one. Yeah, so this is why you need to know the names of your notes on your strings. Yeah, to find the root notes for chords, scales and arpeggios and the tonic for keys so we know where to launch things from. So let's take this here. We're going to use this to build our chords on the grid using bar chords. Yeah, remember, cowboy chords, C and G, we've got one bar chord. But what if we go to the extreme and we say, right, let's play G all in bar chords. All of it. We're going to go G. We're going to go C here and D. These are my majors. So because this is on the E string, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to visualize the shape and then I'm going to actualize it. I go scout, shape, bar. Scout, shape, bar. Can you see that there? Okay, look at this. So we've got that going on there. Now this is cool because, watch what happens. I use my third finger on this one as well. Look at this third finger. My third finger, I just roll it over to make the A shape. And then I put the bar on, watch. You can try that and work it, see if it works for you. Yeah? I think, for me, it made sense that... You can do it with this. Look at this. Just an aside. This is a tangent, guys. This is a tangent, yeah? This is the E chord to the A chord. Look at the A there. I use the third finger because I want the speed of the change. See how this works? Look. Somebody mentioned uh, David Boy there, or um, the Thin White Duke, um, Iggy, Ziggy Stardust. Which is really a bow diddly thing, I think. So, but look, let's take this here and we're going to go. We're going to put that there, okay? Now we move it up two frets and we get the D chord. So here we get those major chords. Here's the G with an E shape. Yes. Okay, and then I roll it over. I'm gonna get to my chord four here. C shape, move it up a whole step. We get the D shape, the D chord using an A shape. So that's an E shape, A shape, A shape. You can see that this can... Yeah, so we got, we got that going on there, right? Right, so that's the major chords taken care of. And we are using the major shapes there. But what we have on the grid is we've got one, four, five there. But we also have six, three, and two here. Look, two, three, six. So, take this shape up here and its logical conclusion. There's the A shape, A shape. Move it up here. It's an A shape, but we have to change it to the minor. So look, scout, shape, bar. I get my chord six. as well right so oh that'll go in there as well look so and I've got a tangent I've got a tangent okay I've got a tangent there is a tangent incoming right this is about caged, really. This is how cage ties in. This is what I call the intersect. We can play this. If you struggle with this bar chord malarkey here on this A shape, what you can do is you can actually
play it a little bit easier. This is the A shape, and if we think about the sequence C, A, G, E, D in caged, yeah? A shape goes to the G shape. There's the A shape, right? These three notes here, this fifth root and third, if we were to play this G shape here, and bar there, we get the same chord. That's an A shaped C. This is a G shaped C. Okay? But the thing is, this G shaped C, it's horrible. It's horrible, mate. You don't want to be playing that. You don't want to be going anywhere near that one. Yeah? So let's take that there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this little thing that makes it so much better. I'm only going to use part of it. I'm not going to use the E string bits off that shape. I'm going to use that thing, that bit there, and I'm going to use that bit there of the A shape, and this third finger here, we get the first inversion. But that means I can play like this, look. Yeah, so. Now, the cool thing is, is if I'm on my E shaped G chord here, look at this. Instead of going to this one here, what I can do is I can use that third finger, as a sliding scout. Look, it's scouting, it's going ahead. I'm gonna go a whole step up. And then I'm gonna put my first finger on. I'm gonna bar three strings instead of six, like this. It's my chord five, look. So chord one, chord four, chord five. So instead of playing it like this, yes, so look at this, the G shape is bad in the Michael Jackson sense, true S armor, yeah, look, I find that rather square, yeah, I, I don't think it's, it's very, very uh, static sounding, yeah, so, uh, 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 it's all right, but this, on my minor chord there. Look at that. So this is still a bar chord, technically, because we are using a finger to hold more than one note, or more than two notes down there. Okay, that's cool. So look at this, two, five, one. Look at this, two, five. One. Look at this. Yeah? And we're working around the grid. These are all these are all bar chords in G. We're no cowboy chords going on here. But we don't have to play that like this. We just take that A shape and we turn it into a G shape and it uses this same part. And it's this 5R3 triad. It's a triad, guys. Look. It's going to help you with your solos. It's going to help you with your solos. Look. <laughs> I love it. I love it to bits. Look, someone's down here. There's me target notes. to the F. Yeah, so what we've got is we've got all this pretty stuff going on here. I'm only using the dots, yes. Okay, so. Chord. I'm playing it this one though as a not just as a, a minor chord, I'm playing it as a minor seven, because it's pretty, yeah. Now if you struggle to do things like that, what you can do is you can stretch out your fingers into pretty chords, yeah, and I'm gonna play this, this is a minor nine chord, yeah. Minor add nine. 
minor, yeah, it's a minor nine. Yeah? You can add those guys there. <laughs> Scouting shapes might be a great lesson. Scouting chord shapes might be a great lesson, MJ James. That's part of the Clockwork Chords course I'm writing right now. Yes, yeah, so... sir. Becomes an easy way to play these uh, um, these chords. Now, okay, so that actually, if you want to know this business that was doing here, that's lesson 61, page 67. And you know what? I'm going to shamelessly do this. I'm going to plug the book. There you go. If you haven't got the book, then there it. There's the barcode. That's where it is, lesson 67. Let me see if I can find it in the book. It's in here somewhere. And page 67. And this is, it's the Hendrix Mayer for Shanti lesson. This lesson hasn't had a lot of love on YouTube. And the thing is, it, it's absolutely one of those that you should know. Can you see there? Look what Look what's on that one. Oh. Oh, oh, the shape. It's a shape that keeps it gives as well. Let me just delve into that. I want to delve into this one because this is one that I absolutely adore. I love noodling around in this. And noodling is, you know, some some people say, oh, you shouldn't noodle. You should do things with purpose. But the thing is, not everybody is using the guitar to be an academic correctamundo musician. Yes. It's not all about that. It's to you might be using the guitar to relax, yeah. And noodling is relaxing. But the thing is, what happens is when you noodle, I think what happens is you 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 become a, a little bit more in in a meditative state. And when you're in that state, that's when the learning goes in. That's where you pick up the observations that make the difference actually in your playing. You want to be aiming for that, the flow. This is what we want to be having. If I take this look. There's the E shape. Yeah? This is a this is a tangent again, isn't it? So we've got this E shape here. And if I put the G shape, uh, sorry, this isn't an E shape, this is an A shape. Yes, using an um the E root note there. So there's an E. It's an E major chord. Okay, look at this. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the G shape. Because I'm using the G shape here. I don't have to hold these notes down here at the 12th fret, but you'll notice it. Notice this. Look, it's the same note. That's an E. That's an E. That's an E. That's an E. Okay. So if I play through using that E there, essentially I'm keeping the G shape there. Okay. Improvisation is the foundation of composition. Everything composed comes from improvisation. Okay? So, we get an E chord here. This is an E chord, but we can also put pentatonic there now you might be looking at that thinking hang on that ricky that looks like box one of the minor pentatonic it actually is but i'm not starting on the first finger i'm starting on the pinky the cool thing is is the c shapes just here but i don't need this i don't need this pinky on there's my chord five a lovely noodle you find your way around it you say to yourself okay I've got this here I've got this here and I've got an E chord there that I can play and I can also think to myself I've got my E major pentatonic
Yeah, I've got this here. Play that as a seventh chord. Okay, so we start to join these little things up, but that little shape. Yes, it's a lovely noodle. And this is one of these things that you just, you play and, and it becomes part of the, the voice that you develop on the instrument. We steal from everybody um, uh, to find our own voice. You know, we t this is why we have, I have a Yorkshire accent because everybody around here talks like me. <laughs> this is why wherever you live, people have that accent. So the thing is, you can't help it. We absorb it. Okay, guys, so hopefully, I think we've just about hit it there, haven't we? Yeah, I've got a few more minutes to wrap up here. And I think, um, but I think that's about it for today. I did have a load more things that we can do with this. But like I say, we only tackled three of the lessons from the book. But you can see how they all tie in. You're going to want to freeze this and see how these all link take a screenshot of that okay okay the simplest guitar soloing ah that's a good one red walrus yes so that is <laughs> you don't steal all original yeah like robert fripp has anybody seen robert fripp's latest thing he's uh, from king crimson it was funny it made me laugh it made me chuckle he's he set up his own only fans <laughs> It's absolutely fantastic. What a joke. What a laugh that is. Um, so, okay, guys, hopefully, hopefully, uh, then you will uh, have got something useful out of that. Um, if you have, then drop a like in the video. Leave a comment after the live stream as well. Yes. Up to pentatonic, up to two string, two strings, two strings. <laughs> I'd have to come back on that one. Uh, true. I'll have to come back on that one. Maria says, sing and play at the same time. Now, you didn't know. If you've been in my in the fretboard fraternity, then you might not know that years ago, when I was slim, even more handsome, uh, I know it's hard to believe, um, uh, uh, when I was slim, more handsome, and had dark hair, and it was long hair, I used to front a 14-piece soul band, uh, singing uh, lots of soul songs. Um, and doing so, I learned to sing and play guitar at the same time. So that sounds like something that we need to probably delve into. Singing and playing guitar at the same time. And some strategies for how you do that. Because, you know, if you can sing and play at the same time, man, you are... You are absolutely a threat to all the opposite sex out there. Ad admiration. You're gonna. <laughs> you are gonna get some some uh, crazy, crazy, crazy compliments about uh, um, you know. Just add something more to to who you are. Okay, then, guys. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish this because <laughs> in two minutes, Man City are about to play. So. Uh, so we will look at that another time. We'll look at that another time. Um, so singing and playing. I'll write that down. I'll put it on my list. I'll put it on my list, guys. Um, and what I'll do is I will say, see you later. Look after yourself. And look after you, um, everybody else that you know. And uh, I'll see you in the next live. And this will be staying up. I'll probably cut some bits out of it and put some... Uh, other other things in what scale is popular g or c or what g and c the keys of g key of g, key of key of c key of g yes yes key of c g key of g those are the two most popular keys but remember we need to talk about tessitura okay okay right okay then guys see you later man sit here on in a minute okay bye <laughs>